an interesting talk today but by the way do we expect more people to show up or we well i um i don't know i didn't check how many people we have we have uh right now we have uh, 18 people online okay so we might get a few more all right so welcome everyone uh, this is the 590 seminar power power and energy system seminar we have an external speaker Dr. Bao Yun Ge. Um, he's going to be talking on an ex, uh, interesting topic on electrostatic machines. Uh, those of you that know Professor Krein's PhD work going back decades, you know this relates to some of what he did. Um, if you've taken 330, 431, we always talk about how um, we like to work on magnetic machines because they are a lot more power dense, energy dense, but there are new breakthrough ideas coming out of the group that um, Dr. Ge worked with at Wisconsin. So he's gonna be talking about this topic. So by way of introduction, I should say he got his PhD out of uh, the University of Wisconsin, Madison uh, in, if I can move this over in 2018. And since then, he's been part of a startup company called C Motive Technologies, also in, in Madison, that's trying to apply this technology to capacitively coupled uh, power conversion. Uh, Dr. Girl received the first place paper award and the third place thesis award from the IEEE Industry Application Society in 2017 and 2019, respectively. I'll just uh, turn it over to Dr. Gur to uh, take this forward. Welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Haran, for the introduction. Uh, let me share my uh, slides here. Uh, can everyone see my uh, slides now? Very good. Oh, great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to my presentation. I hope everyone is staying well at the moment. Uh, even though we have to do this over Zoom, but I will try my best to present my research work. Um, my PhD and company work uh, focus on the uh, macro scale electrostatic machines. And this machine family is uh, extensively used in MEMS, that is uh, micro electromechanical systems. Uh, they are not used in systems of sizes that we are uh, usually familiar with, like a uh, hairdryer, um, mixer, uh, washing machine, let alone big size motors like in compressors and wind turbines. Mm -hmm. So I will explain uh, why this is the case and how my research brought this machine family to the uh, macro scale and the benefit of doing so. Um, before that, please allow me to uh, spend a few more slides to uh, give you a little bit more on my background. Mm -hmm. I came to the US mm -hmm. in 2012 mm -hmm. and did my graduate study with Winpack at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So I was with the um, Ludos group, which focuses on capacitive uh, coupling technologies. We know that there are two kinds of electric uh, energy storage devices, uh, inductor and capacitor. Uh, inductors have been widely used in machines and wireless power transfer. And Ludo's group you know, is trying to replace inductors with uh, capacitors in some uh, suitable applications. Um, during my graduate study, I spent the uh, uh, summer of 2014 at General Electric Global Research Center in New York. So I worked on wind turbine related projects and this experience is a treasure to me. I got uh, to know uh, the cutting edge you know, metal 3D printing technology and the advanced industry uh, Internet of Things uh, concept. Uh, later in my research, you will see in this presentation, it inspired me to apply 3D printing in one of my uh, electrostatic machine uh, prototype. Uh, here's a little bit uh, fun fact here. Uh, my last name is uh, also G, which is why you see my, uh, I'm doing this uh, gesture here. Um, after graduation, I joined my current company, C-Motive, uh, which is a startup company uh, per, uh, commercializing uh, electrostatic machines. It is a small team, but I can work very closely with everyone and uh, uh, we embrace you know, critical questioning and uh, actively seeks out and adapt to changes. 
Uh, I personally uh, value this you know, entrepreneurial uh, experience a lot. Did they, uh, here's ask, you, did they of, ask you at GE to change your last name, not to confuse them with their name? I'm sorry? Is that one of the requests you got? Sorry, I didn't hear that clearly. Did they ask you at General Electric to change your last name uh, <laughs> because you're infringing on their copyright? <laughs> no, they would have to uh, change a lot of names in China as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, uh, here's the table of contents of my presentation. Um, uh, I will uh, first make an introduction uh, on the electrostatic machines, uh, then uh, briefly review what has been achieved before uh, my time. And then based on those, I will then present uh, three uh, of the main topics in my research and then unveil the uh, secret sources I added in my research. For the first two topics, uh, I will only present the core ideas and steps. In the third topic, I will elaborate on the final prototype and the uh, experimental results. Uh, lastly, I will do a summary and draw some conclusions. Uh, electrostatic machine is just a family of electric machines. And electric machines convert uh, electric energy to mechanical energy or vice versa. Uh, they are the workforce uh, for the industry and they, they are very essential to our everyday life. And uh, it comes with different sizes and types depending on the applications. They are also uh, usually pair, uh, paired with drives uh, which control the output of the machines according to the load. Uh, it is estimated that about 45% you know, of the total global uh, electricity flows through electric machines and drives. And this number is about uh, two thirds in US and applications like transportation and electrification in that industry uh, 4.0 and renewable energy are posing uh, new challenges to the research and development of electric machines and drives such as uh, higher uh, torque density and higher efficiency. Let's take a look at the components of the uh, most commonly used uh, machine type uh, magnetic machines. Most of the time, it requires a suitable pathway for magnetic flux, such as silicon steel, as well as a conducting material for electric current, such as copper. And sometimes, uh, especially these uh, high-end applications require torque enhancing materials, such as uh, river earth permanent magnets. Let's take a look at these elements in this periodic table, which is uh, color coded with material availability. The deeper the color, the scarcer the element. The red one means it will be a serious threat in the next 100 years. You can see here magnetic machines will face a big challenge in the generations to come. Because of their availability, their cost will also be higher. Uh, also, you can see these elements are in the lower uh, half of the periodic table, which means that they are uh, heavy. Um, the question is then, can we use more abundant materials or elements to produce uh, potentially lighter and cheaper uh, electric machines? The answer is yes, as indicated here. Uh, ele electrostatic machines may be made out of uh, hydrogen, uh, carbon, uh, oxygen, aluminum, uh, iron, and copper. Uh, copper does have a limited availability, but, you, but uh, uh, as you will see later, the amount of copper used in an electrostatic machine is almost negligible comparing to what uh, magnetic machines uh, do. Okay, this all seems too easy and too good to be true, right? So a natural question to ask is uh, why these machines are not widely used uh, in the first place. Uh, it turns out that the electrostatic force is weak. Uh, this may be understood uh, through some life examples. Uh, it's quite common to see magnetic force is used to do heavy lifting, uh, where electrostatic force is usually associated with small and lightweight things. Um, I actually feel lucky that uh, electrostatic force is much weaker. Just imagine in Illinois and Wisconsin winter, how terrible it would be to take off your sweater if the electrostatic force is as strong as magnetic one. But uh, as researchers, uh, we would like to figure out why electrostatic force is weak. 
Um, let's do some uh, first principle uh, calculation. Here's the energy density of the uh, magnetic field and uh, electric field. Uh, for air median, if we substitute corresponding numbers in the uh, formula, we can obtain this uh, representative numbers. Uh, you can see uh, there's an almost five orders of difference here. That is why. But as engineers, we also would like to find ways to mitigate this. If we compare the two formula, we would find that permeability uh, is the denominator of uh, where permittivity is a multiplier in this equation. So that means air is the best medium for magnetic field, while definitely, definitely not for the uh, electric field. Also, uh, the electric field strength may be improved uh, over air. So here's a schematic showing the basic electrostatic force producing mechanism. Um, the two plates forms a capacitor if we apply some voltage across the two, both of them will experience a force trying to uh, bring the two plates uh, into alignment or uh, equivalently increase the uh, coupling capacitance. As I showed in the last slide, uh, air is not the uh, best medium for electrostatic energy storage. Uh, we can fill the gap with a high permittivity material to increase the capacitance value and thus increase the electrostatic force. And if the high permittivity uh, material also has a high breakdown strength, we can apply higher voltage across the place to further boost the force. Uh, lastly, what I just described are the ways to uh, optimize the electrostatic force per gap. If we can squeeze more gaps in a given volume, the electrostatic force will be even higher. So previous researchers have followed these guidelines as well. Let's take a look, close look at what they have done. Uh, there are three major thrusts in the history. The first one is led by Trump from MIT. Uh, the, you probably have already heard his name from the former president in the past few years. Yes, he is uh, uh, Donald Trump's uh, uncle, a nuclear scientist. The one I'm showing here is his uh, PhD work. Instead of air, he used uh, ultra high vacuum as the energy storage medium with the intention to raise the uh, field strength. He obtained about 0.15 Newton meter at 73 kilovolt. Obviously this is not torque dense enough and the 73 kilovolt is a uh, power electronics nightmare. Uh, a pump is also necessary to provide uh, ultra high vacuum. And recently there are some followers in this uh, category. They also uh, used ultra high vacuum as the uh, energy storage medium, um, particularly the one on the left from Shinsei Corporation in Japan. Um, packs were used as the electrodes rather than plates. You will see later uh, pack design was adopted as well in my proof of concept uh, prototype. Uh, due to its uh, manufacturing convenience. Uh, you can see Shinsei didn't get much output power from this motor either. On the right is uh, O'Donnell's work. Uh, he used plate design as uh, Trump and this machine was uh, intended for wind application. The prototype machine received a 600 watt excitation but only generated a three watt on the output which is uh, not a good sign. The second thrust was led by Felici from University of Grenoble in France. He used a high pressure gas as the gas medium. It turns out that the, under high pressure, the breakdown strength of the gas can be improved. His motor is uh, slightly more powerful than Trump's, but at a much higher uh, voltage. Nonetheless, the lessons he learned from this is valuable to us, uh, particularly a radio flux type with one pair of the stator and the rotor. That is uh, just one gap. Uh, could not provide sufficient uh, surface area that would be of some use. Uh, secondly, the thickness of the electrodes is uh, of great importance in the torque production. The third thrust, as uh, Dr. Haran introduced, was led by uh, Dr. Crime from exactly here, University of uh, Illinois. 
uh, Trump and Felicia focused on a synchronous type of you know, electrostatic machines, where Dr. Klein focused on uh, asynchronous one. Uh, sometimes we also call it induction type. It uh, uses the slip motion between stator and rotor fields to generate the stable uh, charge distribution on the rotor surface, which in turn experiences a uh, force under the stator excitation field. Because air is used uh, as the gap medium, the obtained torque is, uh, was also at the low side at, as well. Uh, but I would like to uh, point out that the introduction of the field analysis and the equivalent circuit in this work uh, inspired my uh, modeling work on the synchronous electrostatic machines. Um, with that, I would like to identify the opportunities in my research. Uh, first of all, materials are critical to the success of making powerful electrostatic machines. Uh, the electric liquids were proposed to be used as uh, energy storage media instead of air, uh, vacuum, or uh, high pressure gas as previous researchers, researchers did. The benefit is that we can increase the energy density without external equipment such as pumps. In this device um, presented by Trump and Felici, they used solid metal materials as the electrodes, which may be replaced by, pl uh, by plastic the, uh, structurally. Um, secondly, previous researchers didn't focus much on the modeling side as the torque density was so low that the need for a high fidelity model was also low. So in my research, I derived a generalized multi-phase equivalent circuit theory as well as a torque evaluation model for electrostatic machines. Uh, thirdly, to make the uh, electrostatic machines as uh, competitive as uh, state-of-the-art magnetic machines, optimization is uh, necessary. So I created a uh, computational tool for this purpose. Uh, lastly, the machine topology was also explored in my research. Uh, the, for proof of concept, I built uh, single-phase machines as Trump and Felici did for the final prototype uh, to further enhance its torque capability, I built a three-phase synchronous machine with uh, field excitation, which has never been done before. Uh, because of limited time, I will focus on the manufacturing, uh, numerical modeling, and the design aspects. Uh, for the analytical modeling part, um, which is uh, very also very interesting, and I have some uh, personal research work on traditional magnetic machines, uh, which is inspired on the analytical mo modeling work. If you are interested, you can uh, ch check my recent publications uh, on IEEE. Uh, before I jump into these uh, topics, I would like to answer uh, a question you may already have. Uh, using the dielectric liquid in a machine seems not appropriate. Uh, appropriate at first glance that the rotation in a liquid environment will produce viscous drag loss, right? And also the dielectric liquid, uh, it's not perfect. It's, uh, it's, uh, it has some uh, certain amount of uh, conductivity, which means leakage loss. Uh, I must admit that these are uh, legitimate concerns. However, if we narrow down our scope to high torque, low speed applications, and carefully select the dielectric liquid, then we may keep these losses to a minimum. At low speed, there are also quite a lot of applications like uh, cooling tower fan uh, and wind turbine, especially recently emerging ones like uh, heavy lifting drones, the in-wheel motor and industrial uh, robots. Uh, in fact, uh, magnetic machines are not uh, efficient in these low speed uh, applications. The reason is that uh, magnetic machines are uh, current craving devices and uh, current flowing means ohmic loss. At low speed, uh, ohmic loss consumes a big portion of the input power. Uh, let's start with the dielectric liquid selection. Uh, this is a table uh, documenting uh, commercially available dielectric uh, fluids. Uh, main properties related to the electrostatic uh, machine performance are listed, including the dielectric strength, uh, permittivity, viscosity, uh, conductivity, 
and the material safety uh, uh, data. Particularly, we selected uh, vegetable oil, uh, FR3 oil and uh, virtual XF as the candidates. Um, the rest are grouped by the reasons that why they are rejected. The first group uh, has a potential hazard to humans and equipment. If you look at the, uh, their uh, material safety data on the right. The second group is very conductive. Um, so which will cause a uh, high uh, conduction loss. And we have already talked about the third group, air and uh, vacuum. They cannot store uh, capacitive energy very densely. Now that we have uh, some candidate uh, liquids, the next, next uh, task is the, to uh, benchmark them in a specialized test cell. This test cell should be able to measure the achievable electrostatic force. Uh, I'm, re I'm recycling uh, one of the previous slides to uh, show that other than the tangential force uh, FT here, we would like the machine to produce. There is also a normal force Fn uh, that is uh, unavoidable. So I made two uh, test stands to measure the uh, achievable tangential and normal forces respectively to uh, benchmark the dielectric liquids. The left side shows the normal force stands that two pucks were placed to face each other in the liquid reservoir. The upper one is mounted to a bigger plate to transmit the force to these three low cells on the outside for force measurements. The right side shows the tangential force stand two uh, comb-shaped uh, electrodes were inserted into each other in the Teflon uh, container uh, here. And the upper electrode is mounted to a low cell for measurement. Uh, with these two test stands, uh, I was able to identify uh, Wattrail XF from DuPont as a promising uh, liquid for the purpose of making an electrostatic machine. It was shown that uh, Wattrail XF can facilitate around two PSI pressure which is seven times uh, greater than vacuum for the same voltage and 300 times greater than the uh, capability of air. Um, after selecting the uh, liquid with the most promising uh, um, um, performance liquid, uh, I made the first electrostatic machine uh, prototype, which is uh, shown here. The electrodes are made of uh, dolphins, which is off the shelf components. Um, and the stator it, it consists of five rows uh, of electrodes and the rotor has uh, four rows. Uh, when they are assembled together, the capacitance between the stator and the rotor varies as the rotor rotates. If the voltage between the stator and the rotor is applied when the capacitance is rising, then positive torque will be produced. This is uh, kind of like the uh, switched uh, reluctance machine in magnetic machines. And to elaborate what I just described, here's the schematic if, you, if we look down the shaft. Uh, let's say the rotor uh, rotates in the counterclockwise uh, direction. Uh, at the present position, the capacitance tends to become uh, smaller as the distance uh, between the stator and the rotor is increasing. Uh, so the voltage between the electrodes should be zero. Um, as the rotor passes the midpoint, the capacitance value starts to increase and the voltage should be applied starting from here all the way uh, until the packs are aligned. Therefore, the uh, generated torque is uh, zero in the first half cycle and non-zero in the second half cycle. If we want to produce torque in the opposite uh, direction, then the voltage should be applied in the first half cycle and removed in the sec second half cycle. And here's a photo showing the first and second generation of, pro of prototypes. On the left is the machine you just saw a few slides back, but with stator and rotor assembled together. Uh, on the right is the second generation prototype. It's uh, smaller than the first generation, but more torque dense. And here's the inside of the second generation uh, prototype. Uh, yes, the structure was uh, 3D printed in this uh, version. 
we can do this uh, simply because the uh, material inside the uh, doping in the first generation didn't contribute anything in terms of the torque production, but it did contribute uh, on this unnecessary weight to the whole system. So 3D print, uh, printing uh, is able to resolve this issue. At the same time, it frees us to use packs uh, whose cross, uh, the cross section is non-circular. Uh, and it turns out that packs with a rectangular uh, cross section produces more torque than circular ones. But, and we still want metals on the surface, right? To carry the voltage and facilitate uh, electric field uh, between the stator and the rotor. So this is done by uh, selective nickel plating on the pack surface. And here's the table comparing these two machines with magnetic machines uh, of uh, uh, similar ratings. The 3D printed uh, design increased the volume metric uh, uh, torque by about uh, 2x and weight specific torque density by uh, 3.5x. And then if we compare it to an off the shelf in induction machine, we can see the volume metric torque density is about uh, half of the induction machine, but the weight specific torque density is actually uh, already higher than the induction machine. And if we compare it to an off the shelf PM machine, we can see that the um, volume metric torque density is still one order away from PM machine and the uh, weight specific torque density is uh, close. So overall, this proof of concept the machines have uh, demonstrated the effectiveness of using uh, dielectric liquids in electrostatic machines. Next, I'm going to introduce two more techniques I investigated to bring the torque density closer to PM machine level. So the first technique was a um, result of the realization that a uh, single phase machine is not uh, using the space uh, efficiently. Let me show you what I meant by that. Uh, here's the schematic uh, of the single phase machine. I showed a few uh, slides back. As the rotor is rotating, the capacitance value goes up and down. As I just illustrated, the, we can only get positive torque uh, when the capacitance value is rising. And therefore half of the space uh, here is not well utilized. And uh, here I highlighted an area here for you to focus uh, as the slide will get uh, pretty busy. Um, naturally, we would like to put another um, rotary electrode uh, here, right? So that torque is also generated in that half cycle. So I'm using different colors here to indicate that the two sets of the rotor uh, packs should not be at the same potential. Otherwise, we'll uh, be ending up at, uh, with the two, uh, uh, the positive torque and negative torque fighting each other. Um, what about the stator side then? Can we simply add another set as the rotor side uh, like this? Well, if you think about it, uh, this is actually the same as the original uh, single phase one. The only change is that we doubled the number of packs or essentially where uh, doubles the um, number of poles. Uh, and here's a much better way to do, the, to do it. Uh, by making the stator side three phase, uh, the torque output will be much smoother, which is critical to uh, servo applications. Okay, um, with that, I uh, would like to uh, transition to the second topic, the, uh, which I did to further improve the torque density. So I create a computational tool uh, for uh, optimizing uh, electrostatic machines. This requires uh, to solve the electrostatic field in the machine. This is yearly done by FEA, FEA, but it takes nine hours per case in my situation, which can be painful, especially when you are iterating your design. Uh, from the first day, from the first day I started the project with my advisor, uh, I have been working on the analytical solution uh, for the electrostatic machines. Just a half, uh, a half year before my final defense, I figured it out. It is uh, difficult uh, comparing to the magnetic machines uh, because in, for magnetostatic field, uh, usually the current is confined within the uh, wires 
uh, and we have the build in the server law to uh, tell us the uh, total field. And if we have multiple windings, we can always use the superposition method. But for electrostatic field, we are given the voltage and uh, we, there is some, we don't know yet law to uh, calculate the field given the voltage. Um, but what about the charge? We do have the columns law that tell us the um, field and given the charge. But the problem is that we don't know the charge density and the position yet until we solve the uh, electrostatic uh, field uh, fully. So uh, analytical solution for electrostatic field usually exists for just few simple cases, like uh, two electrodes in one uniform material. Uh, where in our case, we have uh, three phase on the stator and two sets of rotor electrodes as I illustrated uh, two slides back. Uh, furthermore, there are uh, at least two materials in the active region. So all of these make it uh, solving the electrostatic field even harder. Uh, let's first consider a simplified problem. Notice that the thickness of the electrodes uh, are reduced to zero comparing to the, this slide here. Um, we use a separation of variables to get the general solutions uh, like th uh, this. Uh, we cannot have a uniform solution across all the material domain in the stator substrate, fluid gap, uh, rotor substrate. Um, therefore, let's assign each domain a unique solution for uh, stator substrate, uh, fluid gap, and rotor substrate. And uh, apparently these uh, solutions should match each other at the interface, right? And, uh, and the information from the electrode uh, potential, uh, which is given by the drive uh, are not used yet. Therefore we have to match the boundary conditions at uh, first the uh, electrode surface and secondly in the clearance region between the electrodes. Uh, however, separation, your uh, separation of variables uh, fails as this uh, because it, it can it matches the uh, it can match the potential at uh, the uh, one here, but the it doesn't uh, cannot match the potential at two here. But we only have the um, it turns out if we match the potential at one but charge at two then the whole uh, things uh, work. But uh, we only have potential uh, equations. Where do the charged ones uh, come from then? Uh, conformal mapping uh, tells us that the charge distribution of the field uh, is exactly the harmonic conjugate of the potential distribution. Okay, so to match the potential at the electrode surface uh, one, we have uh, this equation uh, here, phi with subscript i represents the potential on the ice electrode. And then to match the charge at the clearance region two, uh, we have this equation here. Um, here the Q with subscript uh, L means the uh, charge, the amount of charge on the L electrode. Notice that the left hand side of these two equations are simply the uh, real parts and the imaginary part of this complex uh, function. When the complex variable is sitting at the unit uh, circle. So let's take a look, uh, look again on the diagram. If we have the real part, uh, so we have the real part of the complex function to match the potential at the electrode surface and the imaginary part of the same complex function to match charge at the clearance region. This is known as the uh, Votera problem. As far as I know, uh, this uh, problem only exists uh, in the mathematical uh, textbook. And to solve it, one has to use a higher uh, math technique known as the Schwarz formula. Uh, basically, this formula says that uh, if one knows the real and uh, imaginary parts of the complex function on the unit circle, one can uh, reconstruct the, uh, the whole complex function inside the unit circle 
using this uh, information on the uh, unit circle. And the, looking at this equation here, you will notice that the uh, left-hand side and right-hand side of the above equation are both represented by the unknown coefficients, uh, A's and B's. The uh, McLaurin uh, expansion coefficients uh, thus uh, have to, uh, should match uh, from both sides, which results in an infinite uh, linear system to solve. Um, but fortunately, it converges uh, very quickly. Usually when uh, n equals 10 is enough for very accurate evaluation. Okay, this uh, solves our uh, first, uh, the reduced problem, which is uh, when the uh, electrode is, uh, is assumed zero thickness. Uh, um, but in reality, we are facing the problem of non-zero thickness electrodes. And also as the uh, Felicia uh, suggested uh, that the electrode thickness plays an important role in the torque production. Um, so we have to uh, solve this issue. But this is hard because the method uh, I just presented uh, only works for zero thickness. How, so how are we going to, uh, to solve this then? Let's take a moment looking back the history. This is called the Warden Cliff Tower built by Tesla in early 20th century. The idea was using the big sphere uh, electrode to do wireless uh, power transfer. However, it's probably impossible to manufacture a, a smooth uh, surface back then. Therefore, it's mimicked by discrete uh, electrodes, which visioned as a half a sphere. I don't know if it succeed or not, but the idea was great. So in our case, uh, we have non-zero thickness electrodes and we may replace them with uh, zero thickness electrodes like this. In this way, the problem with non-zero thickness electrodes is reduced to one with only zero thickness electrodes, which makes it uh, mathematically uh, easier. And what's more, uh, if, the, if it's not accurate enough, we can always insert more electrodes uh, in between. And the derivation will be skipped here and the result will be shown later in the uh, next topic. But uh, uh, here I will just simply summarize the benchmark results of this uh, analytical uh, work. So uh, comparing to FEA, it shows that uh, um, shows less than 1% of error. And uh, FEA takes about nine hours to solve, but uh, this proposed method uh, uses only 40 minutes with MATLAB. And with some optimization uh, and in C language, it takes less than one second uh, to solve one case. And this has been integrated in a software uh, now and it has been widely used in my current company. Um, before I go to the next section, I just cannot resist myself but to you know, share this uh, interesting way of solving uh, electrostatic field, which I found during my uh, uh, literature uh, search. Uh, basically, uh, he built a finite uh, difference mesh network uh, via resistors. Uh, the potential of e each uh, node represents the field solution. Uh, even though this is a cumbersome work in today's view, uh, it uh, fascinates me. Uh, okay, now it comes to the, uh, the third topic, the uh, final prototype and the experimental uh, results. Uh, the, uh, with the previous work on the dielectric uh, fluid selection, manufacturing, exploration, modeling effort, and computational tool. So I was ready to build the final prototype. And this, these two pictures shows the, uh, the end result. And this is the world's uh, first uh, synchronous electrostatic machine with field excitation. And this was also the world's first uh, the world's uh, most torque producing uh, electrostatic machine until recently that my uh, company uh, uh, broke the record. Uh, the mechanical enclosure and the dielectric liquid were uh, produ uh, provided by uh, C-Motive and the company I'm uh, working at right now. Um, this shows the inside if we take the enclosure off the uh, active torque producing part is only uh, 1.5 inches of axial length, where the whole machine is 6.5 inches. Uh, 
uh, there is so there's a lot of uh, mechanical redundancy built in. To give you some more information on the uh, mechanical redundancy built in, here's the volume distribution map of this machine. The total volume is 5.2 liter, including everything. Where stator and rotor, uh, even though the, the stator and the rotor components uh, takes more than a quarter of the volume, the case and hardware uh, takes almost half of the space. And similar conclusion can be drawn uh, in this weight distribution map as well. So these two maps indicate that we have some room to optimize in the case and hardware in the uh, future. Let's take a closer look at the inside of this machine. Um, this shows the, the exploded view uh, of the active torque producing parts. Notice that we use uh, PCB boards uh, here rather than the doll pins uh, or the 3D printed packs. The reason is that uh, PCB manufacturing is uh, mature than uh, 3D printing. It has been around for a half century and the boards are also you know, highly uh, customizable. So here's the drawing to show uh, how the PCB layout is done. On the uh, stator side, it is like the A, B, C, A, B, C. And on the rotor, it is like uh, plus minus plus minus uh, laid out uh, circumferentially on this board. Another thing that I want to point out uh, here is the uh, clearance um, between these traces are constant uh, as shown in this uh, magnified uh, region. Uh, in this way, the electric field are constant across the uh, clearance region. This is kind of like in the magnetic machines, you would design the two ways to be uniform so that the flux density is uniformly distributed and uh, across the two, uh, two steps. The, uh, thus, uh, and thus the uh, optimally uh, utilize the space. Um, here are the um, uh, photograph of the manufactured PCB boards. We designed the machine to be 96 poles. Uh, therefore, there are uh, 192 uh, electrodes on the rotor side and then 288 on the stator side. Um, the boards are very consistent consistent in terms of the printing accuracy. And we have uh, six rotary plates and seven stator plates uh, in the prototype. At this point, <coughs> excuse me. At this point, some of you may ask this uh, PCB design is quite different from the pack design. So how does this work then? The principle is actually the same, except that the electric flux direction is different. In the pack design here, the uh, packs are axially uh, populated and the electric flux is in the uh, radial direction. Where in the um, PCB style uh, design, they are swapped. Uh, they, that is the, uh, the electrodes are um, radially uh, laid out and then the electric flux is in the uh, radial uh, axial direction. So after conformal mapping, or if we take a scissor uh, and cut along the dashed lines here, both of them can be unrolled to the same topology shown at the bottom. So theoretically, there are no difference between the radio and axial flux machines, but uh, in terms of manufacturing, the axial flux machine has uh, advantages uh, at the moment. Okay, let's check some experimental results. Uh, here's the uh, test setup I used. The prototype machine was paired with a dynamometer rated at uh, 100 Newton meter and a 200 Newton meter torque transducer was used to measure the torque. Uh, to uh, fulfill the uh, electromechanical uh, conversion, uh, there's an in internal current motive force in the machine fighting against the externally uh, applied uh, current source. We call this uh, internal uh, current motive force back uh, MMF. This is uh, analogs to the uh, back EMF uh, in magnetic machines, it is uh, an intrinsic uh, characteristic of the machine. And this plot shows the mirrored waveform of, the, of this back MMF of the prototype machine. The 10 kilohertz of noise or spikes on top of the main waveforms 
or from the switching of the dynamometer drive uh, instead of the drive for the prototype machine. Uh, other than that, the waveforms are almost sinusoidal. Um, this shows the uh, harmonic content of the, the uh, waveforms I showed last slide and after FFT. The uh, total harmonic distortion is less than 1% uh, up to the uh, 51st um, uh, harmonic. This means the torque ripple of this machine can be uh, really low and the machine will maybe be suitable for uh, several applications uh, where motion smoothness is very important. And this slide shows the torque measurement results. Uh, and here's the formula for calculating the torque uh, of the uh, three phase electrostatic machines. It is uh, quite different from the single phase one uh, I showed you before. Uh, actually, this is derived um, from that. And we can get rid of the derivative in the single phase simply because there's a symmetry built in in the three phase machine. Um, and here the uh, VS is the stator side excitation voltage and the VFR is the um, voltage difference between the two sets of the rotor electrodes. Uh, CM is the mutual coupling capacitance between uh, stator and rotor. And the P is the, pole num uh, the number of poles in the machine. Um, so the torque is a linear function of the voltage product VS and VFR. Um, so our method uh, torque did uh, review this relationship you know, as you can see here. Um, so we measured up to uh, 7.3 Newton meter and then we encountered some drive issues and uh, couldn't get any higher uh, at that moment. But uh, had we not encountered the issue, uh, the expected torque value would be 9.4 uh, Newton meter at full excitation. When the voltage product is small at this end, uh, the agreement between the measurement and prediction is not very well. Uh, mainly due to the torque transducer, uh, which is rated at 200 Newton meter and has a 0.4 uh, Newton meter tolerance. Other than that, the measurement results is almost on top of the predicted one. Um, the predicted result in the last slide was actually carried out by the computational tool I presented in the last topic using separation of variables. The table here uh, documents the, uh, the parameter predicted uh, or measured using different methods. You can see here the computational tool um, is almost as accurate as the finite element um, tool. And the predicted uh, mutual capacitance CM is very, very close to the measured results. As to the uh, synchronous capacitance uh, CS, both of the computational tool and FEA is three nanofarad less than the uh, married one. This is mainly due to the leakage capacitance in the inactive region. Um, these two uh, predictive models uh, I have here only counts for the active region. That's why uh, we have a three nanofarad less. Uh, let's take a look at the efficiency of this uh, prostat machine. This is the efficiency map predicted uh, using the uh, circuit model and merit uh, parameters. Um, friction losses due to a viscous drag and bearing uh, friction were uh, excluded. Most of the, you can see that most of the operating space, uh, this machine has an efficiency above 90% at low speed. And this is the uh, efficiency map again but with the friction loss added in, uh, you can see the efficiency generally drops about 10% uh, due to the friction loss. This is uh, still better than most of the magnetic machines out there in this uh, speed range. And this shows the comparison with the magnetic machines. Uh, you can see our uh, specific uh, torque density is already uh, better than all of the selected machines and including the two previously uh, prototyped the electrostatic machines, the pack design and the, the, the dolphin design and the 3D printed design. Um, the volume metric torque density uh, is about halfway um, to the PM machine uh, level. For the last column, uh, here it shows the star loss uh, at 0.5 newton, newton meter output torque. 
uh, you can see this machine is very impressive. It only consumes uh, one third of the PM machine would do. Just like uh, promised, it's uh, suitable for uh, low speed and position hold applications. Uh, lastly, the work uh, done here is benchmarked against the uh, previous uh, researchers' uh, work on um, electrostatic machines. Uh, being relatively low in this column here is the main reason that um, prohibited the previous researchers from making further uh, improvements. So we used the dielectric liquid in our machine and it helps to increase this metric by two orders of magnitude. Then the work implementing three phase with field excitation and optimized structure using the proposed computational tool uh, improved another one order. Okay, here I would like to uh, 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 do a quick demo of the electrostatic machine through video. It will probably won't be that fluent, but uh, I think you can hear the, the sound very well. So you can see here the um, Benjamin Franklin is here enjoying the wind produced by electrostatic force. And here's the, the, the prototype machine. And the speed is about, uh, uh, I think it's 350 RPM in this case. Let me get back to the slides. Bayun, if you could wrap up soon, we'll have some time for questions. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think I'm almost done here. Yeah, so with that, I would like to do a summary and uh, draw the conclusions of this uh, presentation. Um, so the electric liquid was utilized uh, as the essential uh, insulating and uh, force enhancing medium. Uh, theoretical framework for both single and uh, three phase electrostatic machines were established. Uh, a design toolbox for this uh, new machine family was created. Uh, accuracy is not compromised, but speed is greatly improved. Uh, Prostat machines uh, showed that uh, macro scale electrostatic machines can be as competitive as uh, PM machines in low speed applications, but more sustainable, light, and potentially uh, cheaper. And here's the publications I had uh, during my research in, on, the, on this topic. And here's the list of uh, citations used uh, in the presentation. Uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, this uh, funding uh, sources. Uh, uh, my research was mainly uh, funded by uh, NSF uh, Career Award and the uh, final prototype was funded by the uh, Gordon and Betty Moore uh, Foundation. Uh, that's all everyone. Uh, thank you for your attention. And now I'm uh, open to any questions you may have. Probably should get back to the slides. Hello? Yeah. I think there's a question on chat. So, on chat, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, how, how do you drive this motor? Uh, yes, that's a good question. The, uh, the machine is, uh, as, as you uh, uh, watch this presentation, you may already feel that this uh, duo of the uh, electro traditional electromagnetic machines. So the drive is, uh, has a duo as well comparing to the traditional uh, uh, one. So traditionally uh, VSI uh, is uh, the mostly used there to drive the electromagnetic machines. So here we use the current source inverter to drive the, this motor. 
And the, um, instead of using the uh, constantly off, uh, normally off the devices in VSI, we use uh, normally on devices uh, uh, in, uh, in the current source in water. So what is the current status of the use of electrostatic machines from a worldwide uh, perspective? How widely are they used? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So the, uh, the electrostatic machines uh, so far is still has, uh, hasn't received the uh, applications in uh, kilowatt or megawatt applications. Uh, it's mainly used in MEMS applications, which is uh, microelectromechanical uh, systems. So over there, because the uh, uh, electromagnetic machines, uh, you, you have to use windings to produce a magnetic field. And in those very um, tiny uh, systems, the winding, uh, making windings is a uh, difficulty over there. So uh, electrostatic machines have been the winner over there. And uh, as for the uh, macro scale um, machines, uh, my current company is trying to push this uh, to the market. And right now we are uh, working with a uh, tier one um, automotive uh, company uh, working on a world's largest uh, uh, electrostatic machine, which is uh, about 20 inches uh, diameter and produces uh, um, 500 Newton meter uh, torque. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? You, you've certainly uh, referred to duality and, and the, the relationships between the different types of machines. What, what in your experience can we learn from the two sides? Um, you know, in your work on, on building these electrostatic machines, what have you learned about magnetic machines and, and sort of vice versa? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the um, that's a very good good question. So the um, I think there's the uh, duality that I learned is uh, um, because the, the uh, when I design this machine, the electrostatic machines, I always keep the duality in mind. But the in reality, there's uh, still some nuances uh, between the the two. For example, the if I go to the uh, few slides back. For example, in this case, the, uh, the pole number here, usually in magnetic machines, the uh, number of poles are, uh, are the, the it's, um, usually you, you said uh, 3P over four instead of uh, 3P over two here, which is because that the, in the electrostatic machine, uh, electrostatic field is, a, uh, you can have the monopole here, where in electromagnetic machines, it's, uh, you cannot have monopole over there. So you have always uh, have the pole pairs, um, then positive, the north and south um, paired each other. And the uh, second thing I uh, learned in this process is that the, um, uh, I didn't show here, but the, uh, I have a DQ uh, modeling work, DQ axis modeling work on electrostatic machines. That's the, uh, um, in electrostatic machines, you always have the, uh, those uh, resistance, uh, leakage resistance uh, paired with the, um, with the uh, elect I call it the electrifying uh, capacitance. Uh, but in magnetic machines, uh, usually this is not a direct uh, uh, thing because they usually have the winding itself uh, produce the um, uh, forms the inductor, and then the um, the uh, leakage of the uh, not leakage but the serious resistance of the uh, of the windings uh, forms the uh, leakage. But in but for the mutual inductance, it's not that um, apparent because the, over there you usually compared with the core losses. It's not the losses uh, directly from the uh, windings itself. I have a question, William. So mm -hmm. you, you talked about um, recent advances and by uh, 
we've been able to increase the amount of torque produced. My question would be, do you see an ultimate limit or can you, do you envision continual improvement over mm -hmm. the next few years? I mean, how far do you think this is, can be taken? Uh, yes, the, uh, uh, the way I look at it is that this is a, uh, the electrostatic machine is a very, uh, it is a, uh, I think it's a, involves a lot of uh, dis uh, disciplines, uh, including the chemistry, uh, the mechanical and the electrical. So in the, uh, in the coming years, I think the most important things uh, would be the uh, on the electrical side would be the drive because currently we are using the uh, so-called the JFET cascode uh, uh, switches, which they use stack uh, a number of the JFET uh, switches to so that it can withstand a, a certain amount of uh, voltages. And the so uh, we have um, there are there are switches out there can single devices can handle the uh, the, can handle the large uh, the high voltage, but the um, but it's uh, commercially it's very uh, it's not very um, uh, it's very it's not cheap, and the so I think in the electric side the, the, we have to address that, and then uh, on the mechanical side is uh, the um, the stacking of the plates. Um, I think there are some ways we can to. Uh, can improve the uh, efficiency of the this motor further. Uh, for example, in this slide uh, here, even though this uh, the efficiency here is uh, still at the high side, uh, I think uh, uh, there is still some mechanical work we can do. For example, the uh, the electrodes on the uh, on the uh, PCB boards are not recessed into the uh, on the substrate. So the can create the extra uh, whiskers drag, and uh, we can uh, improve on that. And uh, also, there are some technique out there that can improve the um, the uh, reduce the viscosity of the fluid itself by adding some uh, nano uh, particles. And uh, lastly, on the chemical side, uh, one beauty uh, one of the beauty thing of this machine is that. Um, if I sell this machine to a customer, and then a few years later we have a uh, higher uh, performance liquid, then we can always uh, um, f uh, refill the machine with a better liquid, and then give the, the customer more torque if that's necessary. So I think in the next uh, few years, uh, the I think the chemical uh, work is also very important in this regard. If I, if I asked you, say we, we're able to give you a high voltage drive, you know, like one of those X-ray tube, uh, something they use for some high voltage application, mm -hmm. the motor itself, um, to get to say another 10x improvement, is it, do you see a line of sight? Based yes, on ab absolutely. I think the, uh, uh, I think this, um, my, uh, I'm envisioning that the electrostatic machine will uh, see its opportunity in first in some um, uh, large power uh, uh, applications, for example, in wind turbines, where the, um, the, um, there's the PM machine itself in, for example, in direct drive is, uh, itself is a challenge for the PM machines. And this uh, electrostatic machine is a great fit for that application. And at the same time, if the performance is improved by ten times, then the uh, cost of this uh, electrostatic machine will be offset by that. And I think the there will be some. Um, I think there will be some moment uh, over there. Got it. Thank you. Okay, uh, any other questions? Oh, let's uh, thank Dr. Gay for, for a very interesting presentation and thank you for all your efforts uh, uh, to prepare this presentation. 
and the time you have taken to give it to us. We really appreciate it. No, thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's a great pleasure to, um, to present my uh, research at UIUC.